This is a stripped down turn signal circuit. I'm going to connect the power now. This is a thermal flasher unit. It's what makes the turning on and off of this light possible. If I bypass the thermal flasher, it just stays on. And we currently have about 2.5 amps. What happens if we use an LED bulb instead? Now, LEDs on their own have a lot less resistance, but most of these units have built-in resistors, so it's gonna have more resistance than a normal bulb. Look at that, 0.03 amps. We are still using the thermal flasher, but this draws so little power that this never gets enough power to do what it needs to do. This different design runs into the same problem. Even though it draws more power, it's still not drawing enough to get this to work. I've hooked up this resistor parallel to this bulb. I'll start with connecting just the bulb, and then I'll add in the resistor. First the bulb. Now the resistor too. The bulb is flashing a little faster, and you may notice that the amperage is a little higher too. The peak I'm seeing there is almost 4.3 amps. What's happening here is that there are two filaments in this bulb, so there's two wires going to it, and then there's a single ground, and both those filaments are being lit up. In addition to that bulb, there's a resistor wired up in parallel to it. Previously, power could only flow through the two filaments of this bulb, and that was controlling how much power is flowing through this, but now there's an additional path that power can flow through, which goes from this flasher to the resistor, and from there to ground. This is a series parallel circuit. Power is coming from this wire going into this flasher and nothing has split yet. Out of this flasher, there's a few wires coming out. That's when it splits to parallel. Originally, all the power that was going through this circuit had to go through this bulb and whatever this bulb was going to allow was it. But now, this resistor is allowing some power through too. So some goes through here, some goes through here, and this is dealing with all of it. Because there's more amperage in this flasher, it heats up faster. Now, instead of having this resistor in parallel, let's put it in series and see what happens. This flasher is still working to turn the bulb on and off, but because there's a resistor in series with the bulb, the resistor isn't allowing much amperage to get to the filaments, and they don't glow very much. Now let's try this LED with the resistor in series with it. We're having the same problem that we had before where this flasher doesn't get enough power to heat up and actually function properly, but we still have this resistor in series with this LED bulb and it looks just as bright and the amperage is just about the same. The built-in resistance of this LED is so high that the six ohms that this resistor adds is barely a scratch on the surface of it and you don't get much of a change in amperage. So if you put this resistor in series with this LED, it may look like you installed it correctly because it's not any dimmer than it was before, but it's not actually doing anything to aid your turn signal situation. All right, I'm gonna disconnect this and then wire up this resistor in parallel again and see what happens. All right, let's do the lights first. All right, the lights are on, but the flasher isn't working. Let's plug in that resistor and see what happens. All right, it's working. You may notice here that the amperage isn't even getting up as high as we were before with the incandescent bulb by itself, but even still, this is working, and even though this resistor is consuming power, which reduces the effectiveness of the power that you would save by switching to LED, you are still saving power switching to LED. Even this extra bright LED in parallel with this resistor also consuming power, use less power than just this incandescent bulb alone. Upgrading to LED bulbs tends to be pretty easy. If you don't believe me, check out all these videos I made in this playlist of LED replacement videos. If you're more into electrical diagnostics, check out this playlist here. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next Car Simplified video.